Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome along to the first British Speedway quiz night. Uh, first and foremost, we hope you and your families are keeping safe and well, and let's hope you're also following the government guidelines which have been set in place. Understandably, these are tough and testing times for all of us right now, and we're looking at different ways in which we can interact with supporters via our social media channels and hopefully uh, keep you entertained along the way. We've enjoyed some breathtaking races and some fabulous contests on our Monday night Speedway broadcasts and the Twitter takeover where you fired your questions to British Speedway chairman Rob Godfrey also proved very interesting indeed. But tonight we thought we'd try something a little bit different once again and who knows if it proves popular and the feedback is positive and good maybe we'll have a couple more of these um, until some form of normality in the world resumes. So how's it going to work? Well we've got 40 questions coming your way and tonight they're all about the 2019 British Speedway season. Now there aren't any prizes or anything like that it's all for a bit of fun to interact with you the supporters and help pass some time. Hopefully we've got a, a good number of you playing along with us live, but this video will also be available on our Speedway Great Britain YouTube channel for you to play whenever you want. Now you can play individually um, against others in your household or against other people on the various group video apps, or of course you can put your minds together and work as a team. You can play the good old traditional way with a pen and a piece of paper, or you can compare your answers against others by playing along online. For those of you playing live, you can enter uh, your answers in the comments section on our Facebook and YouTube videos. Um, but for those of you who want to do your own thinking, we advise that you disable the comments by pressing the appropriate button. I think we've managed to um, cover every club or every track um, at least once in one way, shape or form. And naturally, uh, some of the questions will be easier for some of you than others. Um, upon me finishing reading the question first time around, a 15 second timer will begin. But don't panic if you don't quite hear it. Not only will I read it a second time, it will also appear on your screen. We'll go through all 40 questions, then we'll have a quick drinks or toilet break um, and view a couple of races from last year. And then we'll go through the answers so you can see just how good your knowledge of the 2019 British Speedway season actually was. We reckon this will take maybe approximately 45, 60 minutes um, in total. So get yourselves comfy, sit back, relax and enjoy. Enough me babbling on with the intro. Hopefully we've got plenty of you tuned in by now and ready to play. So let's do this and get the first British Speedway quiz night up and running. Question number one. Wolverhampton had two riders ruled out through injury before a wheel was turned at Monmouth Green last year. But can you name them? So Wolverhampton had two riders ruled out through injury before a wheel was turned at Monmouth Green last year. But can you name them? And we recommend one point for getting both names for this one. Question number two. Berwick handed a team spot to local lad Leon Flint in 2019. But how old was he for the duration of the season? So Berwick handed a team spot to local lad Leon Flint in 2019. But how old was he for the duration of the season? Question number three, following contractual issues with Craig Cook, who did Peterborough sign in his place on a short-term arrangement to start the season? So following contractual issues with Craig Cook, who did Peterborough sign in his place on a short-term arrangement to start the season? Question four, for the newly introduced Premiership Supporters Cup, which heat lineup was opened up to a public vote? So for the newly introduced Premiership Supporters Cup, which heat lineup was opened up to a public vote? Question number five, which rider took the first individual honour of the 2019 season with victory in the Ben Fun Bonanza fixture 
which was held at Leicester's Paul Chapman and Sons Arena. So which rider took the first individual honour of the 2019 season with victory in the Benfund Bonanza fixture, which was held at Leicester's Paul Chapman and Sons Arena? Question 6. In March 2019, Eastbourne announced the signings of two brothers as club assets. But can you name them? So in March 2019, Eastbourne announced the signings of two brothers as club assets, but can you name them? Question 7. In the absence of Bossdale Allett at the start of the season, who initially took temporary charge of the Kingsland Stars? So in the absence of Boss Dale Allett at the start of the season, who initially took temporary charge of the Kingslyn Stars? Question 8 and multiple choice for this one. In a fixture against his former club Sheffield in April, Josh Orty became the first ever Scunthorpe rider to reach a total of how many points for the club? Is it A, 2,000, B, 2,500, C, 3,000, or D, 3,500? So in a fixture against his former club Sheffield in April, Josh Orty became the first ever Scunthorpe rider to reach a total of how many points for the club? A, B, C, or D? On to question nine. Can you name the winners of the two British under-21 semi-finals which took place at the Isle of Wight and Somerset? Multiple choice again, so your options. A. Anders Rowe and Henry Atkins. B. Ryan Kinsley and Jason Edwards. C. Anders Rowe and Jason Edwards. Or D. Ryan Kinsley and Henry Atkins. So question nine for you again. Can you name the winners of the two British under-21 semi-finals which took place at the Isle of Wight and Somerset? Question 10, and on to the 2019 final at Berwick itself, and it was Robert Lambert who claimed his third British under-21 title, but in which year did he first win the event? So in the 2019 final at Berwick itself, it was Robert Lambert who claimed his third British under-21 title, but in which year did he first win the event? Question 11. After seven straight defeats in all competitions, Birmingham felt it was time to make a double switch at Perry Bar. But which two riders did they bring into their lineup in early May? So after seven straight defeats in all competitions, Birmingham felt it was time to make a double switch at Perry Bar. But which two riders did they bring into their lineup in early May? And again, we recommend one point for getting both names for this one. Question number 12. Which talented teenager struck a five-ride paid maximum in just his fourth National League fixture in May? So which talented teenager struck a five-ride paid maximum in just his fourth National League fixture in May? And I'll give you a clue for this one. The fixture was Bellevue Colts versus Plymouth. Question number 13. Who did Swindon sign in place of James Shanes at the back end of May? So who did Swindon sign in place of James Shanes at the back end of May? Question number 14. In total... How many clubs did Ulrich Ostergaard officially sign for in 2019? So in total, how many clubs did Ulrich Ostergaard officially sign for in 2019? Question 15. 
Partway through the season, Josh McDonald finally got his chance in British Speedway after being snapped up by Sheffield. But with which club was he initially meant to line up for in 2019? So partway through the season, Josh McDonald finally got his chance in British Speedway after being snapped up by Sheffield. But with which club was he initially meant to line up for in 2019? Question number 16. Craig Cook won the Grand Prix qualifier at Glasgow in June, but can you name the other two qualifiers from that same meeting at the Peugeot Ashfield Stadium? So Craig Cook won the Grand Prix qualifier at Glasgow in June, but can you name the other two qualifiers from that same meeting at the Peugeot Ashfield Stadium? And again, we recommend giving one point for both names for this one. Question 17. In June, Mildenhall suffered a 51-38 home defeat against Cradley in the National League, but a dramatic afternoon saw the Fen Tigers finish the meeting with how many riders? So in June, Mildenhall suffered a 51-38 home defeat against Cradley in the National League, but a dramatic afternoon saw the Fen Tigers finish the meeting with how many riders? Question 18. Somerset were crown winners of the Championship Fours at Peterborough in June, but can you name the other three clubs who made it through from the semi-finals? So Somerset were crown winners of the Championship Fours at Peterborough in June, but can you name the other three clubs who made it through from the semi-finals? And for this one, we recommend giving one point if you can name all three clubs. Question 19. With which Premiership club had Brock Nicol agreed to sign for mid-season before a broken collarbone delayed his top flight bow? So with which Premiership club had Brock Nicol agreed to sign for mid-season before a broken collarbone delayed his top flight bow? Question 20, and multiple choice on this one. In July, three teams were all tied on points going into the final race of the 2019 National League Fours. But which rider won the last heat decider for host Stoke, leaving the Isle of Wight and Mildenhall to settle for second and third respectively? Is it A, Connor Coles, B, Joe Lawler, C, Tom Perry, or D, Luke Priest? So basically in July, three teams all tied on points going into the final race of the 2019 National League Fours. Which rider won the last heat decider for Stoke? Question 21 and back-to-back -back multiple choice questions for you again. Newcastle reached the Championship Knockout Cup final last year. But what points deficit did they overturn from the first leg of their semi-final against Edinburgh? Is it A6, B10, C14 or D18? So Newcastle reached the Championship Knockout Cup final last year. But what points deficit did they overturn from the first leg of their semi-final against Edinburgh? Question 22. After rejoining Edinburgh in the summer, which rider was quoted as saying, I didn't really think it would happen. I never wanted to ride for anyone else in the championship. After rejoining Edinburgh in the summer, which rider was quoted as saying, I didn't really think it would happen. I never wanted to ride for anyone else in the championship. Sticking with the championship, question 23. Who was the first club to inflict a league defeat of the 2019 season on Glasgow? So who was the first club to inflict a league defeat of the 2019 season on Glasgow? Question 
Question 24. Charles Wright was crowned British champion for the first time on a memorable night in Manchester in July. But can you name the other two riders who made up the rostrum places of the 2019 British final? So Charles Wright was crowned British champion for the first time in July. But can you name the other two riders who made up the rostrum places of the 2019 British final? And again, we recommend one point if you can get both names for this one. On to question 25. In August, the Isle of Wight hosted a challenge fixture against the specially selected side of which defunct club? Multiple choice as well. Is it A, Coventry, B, Exeter, C, Oxford or D, Weymouth? So in August, the Isle of Wight hosted a challenge fixture against the specially selected side of which defunct club? Options are on your screen now. Question 26. Drew Kemp was crowned British Under-19 champion at Redcar in August, but he won the meeting by scoring how many points from his five programme rides? So Drew Kemp was crowned British Under-19 champion at Redcar in August, but he won the meeting by scoring how many points from his five programme rides? Question 27. Drew Kemp and Anders Rowe teamed up to win the 2019 National League pairs at Sheffield's Ollerton Stadium. But which club were they representing? So Drew Kemp again. Him and Anders Rowe teamed up to win the 2019 National League pairs at Sheffield's Ollerton Stadium. But which club were they representing? Question 28. In August, Alan Rossiter stood down from his role as Great Britain team manager after how many seasons in charge? In August, Alan Rossiter stood down from his role as Great Britain team manager after how many seasons in charge? Question 29. Can you name the rider who returned to the sport for the first time since 2013 who was a part of Plymouth's late season team changes? So can you name the rider who returned to the sport for the first time since 2013 who was a part of Plymouth's late season team changes? Question 30. Which Bellevue rider broke the track record at the National Speedway Stadium in August? So which Bellevue rider broke the track record at the National Speedway Stadium in August? Question 31. Ipswich brought in Niels Christian Everson and James Sargent late on in the season, but which two riders did they replace at Foxhall? So Ipswich brought in Niels Christian Everson and James Sargent late on in the season, but which two riders did they replace at Foxhall? And once again, we recommend one point if you can get both names. Question 32. Which German rider claimed his first major individual honour in British Speedway on September the 1st, 2019? So which German rider claimed his first major individual honour in British Speedway on September the 1st, 2019? Question 33. Which club finished top of the regular Premiership standings to earn selection of opponents in the playoff semi-finals? So which club finished top of the regular Premiership standings to earn selection of opponents in the playoff semi-finals? Question 34. 
Craig Cook and which other rider sealed championship pair success for Glasgow at Somerset in September? Craig Cook and which other rider sealed championship pair success for Glasgow at Somerset in September? Question 35. After being postponed twice at Leicester, the National League Riders' Championship eventually took place at which track? After being postponed twice at Leicester, the National League Riders' Championship eventually took place at which track? Question 36. Who were Great Britain's opponents in the Global Challenge at Kings Lynn's Adrian Flux Arena in October? So who were Great Britain's opponents in the Global Challenge at Kings Lynn's Adrian Flux Arena in October? Question 37. Craigley's final meeting was the Golden Hammer individual. Three former Heathens title winners finished on the rostrum that night, but can you name them? So Craigley's final meeting was the Golden Hammer individual. Three former Heathens title winners finished on the rostrum that night, but can you name them? Again, one point for all three riders is what we recommend. Final multiple choice question of the quiz. Question 38. What was the Premiership playoff final aggregate score that saw Swindon beat Ipswich to the 2019 league title? Is it A. 109.70, B. 110.69, C. 111.68, or D. 112.68? So, what was the Premiership playoff final aggregate score that saw Swindon beat Ipswich to the 2019 league title? Options A to D on your screen now. Sticking with aggregate scores, question 39. How many points did Leicester beat Glasgow by on aggregate to be crowned championship title winners? So how many points did Leicester beat Glasgow by on aggregate to be crowned championship title winners? And now for Leicester's other side, and this is the final question of tonight's quiz. Question number 40. Which rider top scored for the Leicester Lion Cubs in both legs of their National League Grand Final victories against Kent? So which rider top scored for the Leicester Lion Cubs in both legs of their National League Grand Final victories against Kent? Well, have a breather, everyone. That is the 40 questions complete, done and dusted. So it's time to put that kettle on, grab a can from the fridge, head to the toilet or do whatever you need to do. Uh, we'll be running through the answers for all 40 questions in around about five minutes or so. In the meantime, here are a few races from the 2019 British Speedway season for you to enjoy. So coming to order, four heat five, the tapes fly where they go. Jordan Paley makes a nice start off the outside. And Jordan Paley's going to try to carry his way around the outside here. Thompson boys giving chase. Dan Thompson throwing it in the hot on the inside of Jordan Palin, trying to force the Colts number one into a mistake. Joe Thompson in third and Danny Phillips struggling, he's at the back. Dan Thompson very aggressive move down on the inside of Palin, trying to move Palin to the side. And it's a drag race between those two. Well, in heat one, it was Joe Thompson who worked his way around the outside, and this time it's Dan Thompson trying to work his through on the inside. So two laps gone, a really competitive heat number five. And once again, Dan Thompson, very aggressive through on the inside of Palin. And Dan Thompson gets into the lead. And Palin looks to respond. Palin trying to come around the outside of him. It's going to be nothing between them on the last lap here. Fine action in this heat five. And Joe Thompson with a watching brief as well. Dan Thompson looks up slightly. Palin trying to uh, power his way back around him. Looks to have done so. Nothing between them. Fabulous action here. 
Dan Thompson with one last effort from uh, Jordan Palin, but Dan Thompson's going to bring it home and the uh, mistake from Palin and Joe Thompson comes through on the inside. Well, the Thompson twins worked overtime there. Dan Thompson with a stunning ride and Joe Thompson took advantage of a mistake from Jordan Palin on the uh, last lap. Well, that's one of the best races you'll see all season long. We've seen plenty in this 2019 campaign for the Thompson twins to find their young years there and uh, putting in a fabulous ride, both of them in heat five. Takes fly where they go. Ben Sargent makes a nice start from the outside. Masterson's made a good one, but it's Howarth that shows. Howarth out of shape, next in the uh, second corner, and Howarth impedes his team partner as Monarchs go one and two. So a bit of uh, good fortune for Edinburgh in this one as Howarth tried to recover. It's Masterson from Sargent. Kyle Howarth horribly out of shape, exiting the second corner, and at this stage, Kennedy finding himself stuck at the back. So Edinburgh striking back with the, a fight one of their own here as Kennedy's out of shape at the rear of the field. Two laps gone on each other. Masters remaining uh, supreme out front on his way to his fourth victory, but James Sargent holding off uh, Carl Howarth, who seemingly can't hunt him down here. A lap to go, and this result would give uh, Edinburgh some hope here. Although Carl Howarth at least trying to salvage second spot, trying to hunt down James Sargent, he's got the pace. What can he do on the final corner? Masters will bring home the win. Here comes Howarth with a wide outside blast on Sargent. We're now cut down on the inside of Sargent. It's a run to the flag, and Howarth's got up for second spot. Well, aid for effort from the captain of the Sheffield Window Centre Tigers, Carl Howarth, battling his way through to hunt down James Sargent. Good action there in heat number uh, 11 after Carl Howarth made a bad mistake on the first and second corner. Went right across the track. Very fortunate indeed not to be collected by the other three riders. But uh, as the race continued, Howarth worked out the best way to attack uh, James Sargent. Had got a bit more pace than Sargent. And next in the final corner, very close as they came off the fourth bend. But uh, Carl Howarth securing second spot there. Come to order. Takes by where they go. Sam Masters with a nice start off gate one. He gets down to the first corner and Kyle Howe with a fine piece of cornering. Slots into second. So it's uh, Wolverhampton one and two. Chris Harris will throw it out wide on the top corner. Try to come around the outside of Kyle Howard. Now cuts down on his inside. Howard's left a gap there and Howard slots into second. Close between uh, first, second and third. Can it out of shape at the back? Chris Harris now getting into second, but Kyle Howarth won't be denied. Trying to come back around the outside of him. Masters looking around because Harris has uh, fired up here. I think Masters might be struggling for grip. Harris on one wheel. What can the bomber do here? He'll cut down on the inside of Masters, trying to force the Australian off the line. They come through with a lap to go. Close action here, and Harris seemingly has stormed his way from uh, third to first, as Harris does. And Chris Harris takes it up. Sam Masters back into second now. What can Masters do off the final corner? It's been a fine ride from the bomber. Chris Harris will win it. Second round home, Sam Masters. Third, Kyle Howard. Disappointing for Ed Kennett. Well, Chris Harris. And everything right in that one. Strong ride. Battling his way from third to first. Firstly uh, dispatched Kyle Howarth. And then saw a gap through on the inside of uh, Sam Masters. Take an impressive win there in heat number 11. Coming to order, heat 12. Get to the first corner, instantly chases the dirt line, close to competitive stuff. Coming off the second corner, the Paul Michelle around the outside of Bush Jackson, but it's aces. One and three, here comes Bush Jackson through on the inside of Michelle. Michelle looking to respond back straight through on the inside of him. Point action on the first lap with Bewley making it count for the inside. Bush Jackson trying to respond here on Michelle. He's got his wheels in line. That's a fabulous inside pass by the Dane. And Michelle will try to do likewise here. These two trading places on every corner. Michelle back into second spot. Bush Jackson back to on his inside out. Absolutely sensational stuff. Michelet reads that well as Bush Ackerson's run wide. And Bush Ackerson will come back for more. They're racing here at the National Speedway Stadium. Once again, outstanding. As these two on every corner training places. Bush Ackerson still holding on to second. But Michelet with pace. He'll keep it down on the inside of Bush Ackerson. He's back through on the inside of Bush Ackerson. But here comes Bush Ackerson again. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. The Aces in a 5-1 situation as they come round to take the flag by Shackleton to White. Oh my goodness me, what a finish of heat number 12. Every meeting, every meeting serves up 
one of the best races you'll see all year. And my goodness me, that was absolutely awesome. Daniel Bewley out front, missing all of it, as Bush Jakobsen and to Tobias Muschelek trade places on every corner. Well, that's in our top five races of the year. You don't get it anywhere else. It's just outstanding. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the British Speedway Quiz Night. Um, we hope you've got your drinks and snacks, and we hope you enjoyed the interval action we just brought you. Uh, some great races there, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, time to get those answer sheets in front of you now, though. Uh, the 40 questions, 40 answers coming up. Let's see how you got on. Question number one, Wolverhampton had two riders ruled out through injury before a wheel was turned at Monmouth Green last year, but can you name them? The answers, Nick Morris and Jakob Torschel. And we recommend that we give uh, you give one point for both names for that one. Uh, Nick Morris suffered a wrist injury, whilst Jakob Torschel picked up a hand injury and an arm injury during a pre-season motocross session. Question two, Berwick handed a team spot to local lad Leon Flint in 2019, but how old was he for the duration of the season? 16 is the answer for that one. Leon Flint was born in February 2003 and secured a place with the Bandits, where his dad Gary was also introduced as full team manager. On to question number three, and following contractual issues with Craig Cook, who did Peter sign in his place on a short-term arrangement to start the season? Aaron Summers, the answer to question three. Summers impressed club bosses and extended his stay at the East of England Arena, but was then ruled out for the remainder of the season after suffering a broken foot in August. Question number four for the newly introduced Premiership Supporters Cup. Which Heat's lineup was opened up to a public vote? Of course, it was Heat 14. To help get supporters more involved, team managers would nominate four riders before supporters then took to Twitter to vote for uh, the rider they wanted to see from those four riders in the penultimate race of the Premiership Supporters Cup meetings. Question number five, which rider took the first individual honour of the 2019 season with victory in the Benfund Bonanza fixture, which was held at Leicester's Paul Chapman and Sons Arena? And the answer for that one, it's Scotty Nichols. Now, remember, this is about the 2019 season, so hopefully not too many of you got mixed up and put Danny King from the only meeting to happen in 2020 so far. Uh, Nichols top scored in the 2019 Ben Fund Bonanza with 13 points and then won the final on his home championship track also. On to question number six, and we asked you in March of 2019, Eastbourne announced the signings of two brothers as club assets, but could you name them? The correct answer for question number six, it's Daniel and Ethan Spiller. The Spiller brothers previously rode for the Eagles in the National League and hope to represent the club at a higher level at some point in the future. Question number seven, in the absence of Bossdale Allett at the start of the season, who initially took temporary charge of the Kingsland Stars? Correct answer for that one, Scott Campos. Well, Dale Lallett was ruled out of his management duties through illness and the Adrian Flux Arena outfit called upon former Young Stars rider Campos to cover. Some of you might have forgotten that, I'm sure, and put Peter Schroek as your answer, but he didn't take charge until mid-April. Multiple choice for question eight in a fixture against his former club Sheffield in April. Josh Orty became the first ever Scunthorpe rider to reach a total of how many points for the club? A2000, B2500, C3000 or D3500? The correct answer is C3000. Uh, Josh Orty, who of course was scheduled to have his testimonial at the Eddie Wright Raceway last month, uh, scored 10 points in the Championship Shield Clash, which saw him break the 3000 point mark for the Scorpions. A great achievement for any rider at any level, I'm sure you'll agree. Sticking with multiple choice for question number nine, can you name the winners of the two British under-21 semi-finals, which took place at the Isle of Wight and Somerset? Your options were A, Anders Rowe and Henry Atkins, B, Ryan Kinsley and Jason Edwards, C, Anders Rowe and Jason Edwards, or D, Ryan Kinsley and Henry Atkins? And the answer we were looking for for that one was option B, Ryan Kinsley and Jason Edwards. 
Ryan Kinsley won semi-final one with a maximum at the Isle of Wight, while Jason Edwards capitalised on heartbreak for Somerset home rider Henry Atkins, who was also set to go through the card until a clutch problem in the final on the night sent him to the back. Question number 10, moving on to the 2019 final at Berwick itself, and it was Robert Lambert who claimed his third British under-21 title, but in which year did he first win the event? The answer... 2017. It was not only Lambert's third British under-21 title, but it was also the third year in succession he had finished top of the box. Question number 11. After seven straight defeats in all competitions, Birmingham felt it was time to make a double switch at Perry Bar, but which two riders did they bring into their lineup in early May? The two names we're looking for for this one, Adam Ellis and Nathan Stoneman. And again, we recommend you only give one point uh, for both names. So Adam Ellis and Nathan Stoneman. The pair joined the Brummies with Kyle Newman and Danish newcomer Tobias Thompson, the two riders to make way. Question number 12. Which talented teenager struck a five-ride paid maximum in just his fourth National League fixture in May? Gave you a clue as well that the fixture was Bellevue Colts versus Plymouth. And the answer was Jordan Palin. Palin scored 14 plus 1 as the Colts beat the Gladiators 50 points to 40 at the National Speedway Stadium. Question number 13 then. And who did Swindon sign in place of James Shanes at the back end of May? The answer was Ellis Perks. And it turned out to be something of a key signing as well as Perks more than played his part in Swindon's Premiership success. And of course, Perks himself made history by being a part of the title winning teams in all three of Britain's leagues. On to question number 14 then. And in total, how many clubs did Ulrich Ostergaard officially ride for in 2019? So going through those and working out how many he signed for. The answer we're looking for is four. So Ostergaard started the championship season with Birmingham before moving on to Redcar and then Newcastle. And the Dane was also then snapped up by Peterborough late on in the Premiership. Question 15. Partway through the season, Josh McDonald finally got his chance in British Speedway after being snapped up by Sheffield. But with which club was he initially meant to line up for in 2019? The correct answer is Workington. The Australian had signed for the Comets before they had to withdraw from racing last year and he joined Sheffield in June as a replacement for Casper Anderson. Question number 16. Craig Cook won the Grand Prix qualifier at Glasgow in June, but can you name the other two qualifiers from that same meeting at the Peugeot Ashfield Stadium? Niels Christian Everson and Pontus Aspgren. The answers for that one, again, recommend giving one point if you got both names correct. Craig Cook won the meeting on his home championship track with a 15-point maximum, while Everson and Aspgren contested a runoff after both finishing with 13 points apiece. Question number 17. In June, Mildenhall suffered a 51-38 home defeat against Craigley in the National League, but a dramatic afternoon saw the Fen Tigers finish the meeting with how many riders? Astonishingly, the answer for that one is four. Macaulay Leak, Elliot Kelly and Charlie Brooks all crashed out before the end of Heat 5, leaving the hosts with an almost impossible task at West Row. Question number 18. Somerset were crown winners of the Championship 4s at Peterborough in June, but can you name the other three clubs who made it through from the semi-finals? Sheffield, Glasgow and Eastbourne are the three clubs we are looking for for that one. And again, we recommend you give one point if you did name all three of those clubs. Somerset were actually the lowest scorers of the four qualifiers with 14 points, while the other three, Sheffield, Glasgow and Eastbourne, all tied with 15 in the semi-finals. Question number 19. With which premiership club had Brock Nickel agreed to sign for mid-season before a broken collarbone delayed his top flight bout? Correct answer, Kings Lynn. Nickel was announced as part of a double change on the Friday with his debut set for the Monday. But unfortunately, the American crashed whilst guesting for red car at Leicester on the Saturday and was forced on to the sidelines. Question number 20. And the first of back-to-back -back multiple choice questions, this one. So in July, three teams were all tied on points going into the final race of the 2019 National League Fours. 
but which rider won the last heat decider for host Stoke, leaving the Isle of Wight and Mildenhall to settle for second and third respectively? And the options were A, Connor Coles, B, Joe Lawler, C, Tom Perry, and D, Luke Priest. And the correct answer for that one was A, Connor Coles. Coles edged a, a thrilling finale at Luma Road in a photo finish with Georgie Wood. And obviously that's a, a night for all associated with the Potters to remember. Question 21, multiple choice once again. Newcastle reached the Championship Knockout Cup final last year, but what points deficit did they overturn from the first leg of their semi-final against Edinburgh? Is it A6, B10, C14 or D18? I can hear you telling me your answers now, but the correct answer was option C, 14. The Diamonds lost 52-38 at Armadale, but dug deep and sealed an aggregate comeback and progression with late back-to-back -back maximums in their home leg. On to question 22 then. And after rejoining Edinburgh in the summer, which rider was quoted as saying, I didn't really think it would happen. I never wanted to ride for anyone else in the championship. The correct answer, Sam Masters. As the Monarchs look for a different recipe for success, the Australian made an emotional return to Armadale, where he won the league in 2014 and 2015. Sticking with the championship, question 23. Who was the first club to inflict a league defeat of the 2019 season on Glasgow? Newcastle is the answer for question 23. The Diamonds ended the Tigers' impressive run with a 47-42 home win on July 21st. Question 24. Charles Wright was crowned British champion for the first time on a memorable night in Manchester in July. But can you name the other two riders who made up the rostrum places of the 2019 British final? Danny King and Craig Cook again. One point we recommend if you got both of those names. It was actually King and Cook who qualified straight through to the grand final as the top two point scorers. And when Charles Roy took the chequered flag in the final, it was only the second race of the night that Danny King had failed to win. On to question 25, multiple choice for this one as well. In August, the Isle of Wight hosted a challenge fixture against the specially selected side of which defunct club? A, Coventry, B, Exeter, C, Oxford, or D, Weymouth? And the correct answer is C, Oxford. The Warriors defeated the Cheetahs select 54-36 in front of a big crowd at Smallbrook. Question 26. Drew Kemp was crowned British Under-19 champion at Red Car in August, but he won the meeting by scoring how many points from his five programme rides? Correct answer. 15. 15 points for Drew Kemp as he won the British Under-19 Championship, he went through the card on side, finishing ahead of Jason Edwards and Anders Rowe. And Heat 15 proved to be pivotal in that meeting, with that trio clashing in the same race after they'd all won their opening three outings. Sticking with two of those riders for question 27, Drew Kemp and Anders Rowe teamed up to win the 2019 National League pairs at Sheffield's Olerton Stadium. But which club were they representing? Kent, the answer for that one. The duo scored two more points in the final than the Leicester Lion Cubs managed and wrapped things up in style for the Kings with a 7-2 maximum over Plymouth in their last outing. Question 28. In August, Alan Rossiter stood down from his role as Great Britain team manager after how many seasons in charge? So I could more or less hear you all working that one out in your heads. And the answer... For question 28 is six. Rossiter was appointed national boss in 2014 and Great Britain secured two international silver medals under his guidance during that time. Question 29. Can you name the rider who returned to the sport for the first time since 2013 who was a part of Plymouth's late season team changes? The correct answer for this one, Tom Young. Young came in and did a handful of meetings for the Gladiators, having not ridden competitively for six years when he had spells with the Isle of Wight and Stoke. Question 30. Which Bellevue rider broke the track record at the National Speedway Stadium in August? 
Now, I'm sure a lot of you will remember Max Frick was in stunning form uh, for the Aces last season. But it wasn't him who broke that track record. The correct answer for question 30, Dan Bewley in a 54-36 win over Kings Lynn. Bewley lowered the three-year mark, which was set and held by Niels Christian Everson. Sticking with the Dane, question 31. Ipswich brought in Niels Christian Everson and James Sargent late on in the season. But which two riders did they replace at Foxhall? The correct answers for this one, Christian Pischek and Edward Kennett. Again, we recommend one point if you got both of those names. The Witches made the changes to help boost their playoff hopes, and to an extent they worked as they reached the Premiership Grand Final. Question 32. Which German rider claimed his first major individual honour in British Speedway on September the 1st, 2019? Correct answer, Eric Rees. Rhys won the Championship Riders individual representing Redcar at Sheffield's Olderton Stadium. And he was wearing some bright white Kevlars that day as well. And a terrific performance for Eric Rhys. Question 33. Which club finished top of the regular Premiership standings to earn selection of opponents in the playoff semi-finals? Correct answer was Poole. The Pirates beat Kingsland 51-39 at Wimborne Road to leapfrog Swindon into first place and then elected to race Ipswich in the playoffs. Question 34. Craig Cook and which other rider sealed championship pairs success for Glasgow at Somerset in September? The answer we're looking for for this one, Rasmus Jensen. So the Tigers sealed a 6-3 heat advantage in the final over Leicester with Cook getting the better of Ryan Douglas while Jensen earned an all-important third place following a terrific scrap with Scott Nichols. Question 35. After being postponed twice at Leicester, the National League Riders' Championship eventually took place at which track? Correct answer for question 35 is the Eddie Wright Raceway, or we'll accept Scunthorpe as it's Scunthorpe's track. That eventual staging was also unfortunately brought to a premature halt, but a result was declared on this occasion with Anders Rowe, Drew Kemp and Max Clegg, the top three. On to question 36. Who were Great Britain's opponents in the Global Challenge at Kings Lynn's Adrian Flux Arena in October? Denmark, the correct answer for that one. Uh, newly appointed co-bosses Simon Stead and Ollie Allen took charge of Great Britain Speedway team for the first time. Um, their selected side beat the Danes 53-37. Question 37. Cradley's final meeting was the Golden Hammer individual. Three former Heathens title winners finished on the rostrum that night. But can you name them? So just need to rewind a few more years for that one. But... On the rostrum in that one, Max Clegg, Nathan Greaves and Tom Perry. Again, we recommend one point for all three riders. The trio won the National League together in 2014, with Clegg and Greaves also a part of the champion septet the previous season. Nearly there now. Question 38. Multiple choice this one was. What was the Premiership playoff final aggregate score that saw Swindon beat Ipswich to the 2019 league title? A, 109.70, B, 110.69, C, 111.68, or D, 112.68? And no, it doesn't add, add up to 180, because the correct answer was C, 111.68. The Robins won 49.41 at Foxhall uh, to put themselves in the driving seat before claiming a 62.27 victory in the second leg at the Abbey Stadium. Sticking with aggregate scores for question 39, how many points did Leicester beat Glasgow by on aggregate to be crowned championship title winners? The correct answer is two. The Lions triumphed 91-89 on aggregate to enter the record books on a tense but memorable night in Scotland. And for Leicester's other side for the final question of tonight's quiz. Question 40. Which rider top scored for the Leicester Lion Cubs in both legs of their National League Grand Final victories against Kent? Correct answer. Daniel Hume. The skipper scored 16 plus 2 in the home leg before adding 13 plus 1 on the night he lifted the trophy for his side at Central Park.
So that's it. Our first British Speedway quiz night is complete. Uh, there were 40 questions and 40 points up for grabs if you marked it as we suggested along the way. How did you get on? Um, as we said at the start, there are no prizes. It's all a bit of fun, but do please feel free uh, to post your score or maybe even a picture of your answer sheet on to our social media channels um, in the comments section, maybe underneath this video, and show everyone just how much you remember about last season. If you have enjoyed tonight's quiz, then please do let us know via our various social media channels. Uh, we're on Facebook by searching Speedway GB. Uh, we're on Twitter at Speedway GB. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. That's Speedway Great Britain. A huge thanks to all of you um, who have played along tonight. Uh, we hope it kept you entertained and we hope it helped kill a bit of time as well. And um, before we go, a massive shout out uh, to all the NHS staff and care workers for the unbelievable work that you're doing right now. Um, and a big thank you to all you other key workers as well. Uh, we know these are tough times, as we said at the start, and we all can't wait until things get back to normal, till we're back at trackside watching Speedway, uh, a great season in prospect, I'm sure you'll agree. And even doing the, the other things we normally would be, socialising in, in pubs and restaurants, and uh, some of us can't wait to get to the barbers as well. Um, in the meantime, though, please do remember to keep following the government guidelines, stay at home, protect the NHS, and save lives. Uh, keep following and interacting on our social media channels, like I say. Let us know just how much, and if you did enjoy tonight's quiz, and uh, we may think about doing another one if we get enough positive feedback. In the meantime, look after yourselves and your families, and we'll catch you back very soon.